Hello, Aldo Figueroa here, and today in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how you could use Photoshop CS6, their automation photo merge, to assemble a panorama photo. Before we begin, you first need to make sure that you already have shot your panorama photo. So for example, I am running OS 10 here, and let me just show you these images that I have. So this here is a panorama that I took. And you can see how each image has at least a 30 to 50 percent overlap. When I took these photos, I made sure that I had a tripod. If you don't have a tripod, try to keep the camera as steady as possible and rotate it along its axis. So I took these images, and what I want to do now, I want to assemble all of these images as one panorama format image. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. In addition to that, I will also show you, once we create our panorama, I'm going to show you how to do a couple of other things. Uh, some minor edits. I'm going to show you how you could straighten this panorama if it needs straightening, how to crop it, and then how to save. And once we've saved it, I'll also show you how to resize it so you could get a smaller panorama. All right, let's go ahead and begin. So I already have Photoshop open, and here's Photoshop. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to select Automate, and I'm going to go to the bottom, Photo Merge. This is going to open up, it's a little like a helper application. First thing that we have to do, we have to supply some images. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Browse here. It's going to open up a Finder window, and it's already assigning this to this folder here that I already have. I have some panoramas, uh, my images that I just showed you. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of them. Now, what you could do, you don't have to select each one individually, select Open. If you want to select a whole range, I've already clicked on the first one. I'm going to hold down Shift and just click on the last one. If you know that there's some images that you wish to exclude, press and hold down Command or Control on your PC to deselect some of these. But I want them all. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of them, and I'm going to tell it to Open. All right. Now, for Options. On the left-hand side here, we have different layout options in which Photoshop will assemble your images using different methods. I'm just going to stick with Auto, but I highly suggest that you go through each one of these to see what type of results it gives you, because they will not be the same. At the bottom, I'm going to make sure that I have Blend Images Together clicked on, because I want my images to be seamless once they are connected. Uh, these two other options down here, the vignette removal, uh, go ahead and turn this on. If on the edges of your images, it's slightly darker. It's going to try to remove that darkness that's caused by some lenses. And for the geometric distortion control or correction, if you're using a wide angle or fisheye lens, this will try to fix the distortion that those lenses create before it creates this automation. I'm going to leave those two unchecked for right now for this demo purposes. Uh, but do consider that if a uh, couple of things, the more images you give Photoshop, the bigger the resolution, and if you turn on these options, it'll take a little bit longer for Photoshop to uh, compile your panorama. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. During this process, I might speed it up, so it might, uh, when I come back, it might already be done. It typically will not go that fast. But what Photoshop is doing right now, just to walk you through this, it's opening up each image and then it's copying all of the images into a new document. Once it places all the images in this new document, it's trying to arrange them. It's trying to see where, they're, where the images line up uh, one next to another. And then, since I turned on the option of Blend Images Together, it's going to try to blend the images where, they're, where they line up one to another. So it's going to create a series of uh, image mask. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this finish. It looks like it's almost done, so I didn't have to pause. Great! So here we have it. Here is my panorama. Now, I, I do suggest that you zoom in so you could see what you're looking at. Right now, I'm at 10%. So I'm going to go ahead and press Command Plus or Control Plus. This allows you to zoom in. Or if you want to, you could press Command 1 or Control 1 to zoom in at 100%. 
Command Zero or Control Zero to have Photoshop put your entire image on your screen. I'm going to press Command One to zoom in at 100%. I'm going to press and hold down the space bar. I get this little grabbing hand, and I'm able to move side to side. So I could see that there's certain places that, you know, it didn't do the photo merge operation as good as I've liked it to. But for this demo purposes, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as that. I could always go in and see which images I might want to adjust. So say, for example, I'm going to point this out right now. You can see right here, there's a little break. I could either try to fix that by giving fo this photo merge operation different images to use, or I could fix it post-process using Photoshop. I could also see right here, there's a couple of other errors, things to watch out for. But again, just to assemble your photo, your uh, all your images as a panorama. That's the operation. It was as simple as that. Now I want to go ahead and show you a couple of other uh, tools that you'll be able to do to edit an image like this. Simple editing. I'm not going to go into actual photo touch-ups. That will be another demonstration to come later. Uh, but first, I want to show you straighten your image. I highly suggest that you first decide to straighten your image uh, before you go about uh, cropping your image. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and use the crop tool. Or you could press C on your keyboard. Uh, in the crop tool, there is an operation right here that allows you to straighten your image. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And this tool is really easy to, do, to use. All you do is you determine where, what angle or what area should be straight within your image. So I'm going to zoom in here. Uh, there's a, a natural, this is a walkway, so there's a natural uh, what is this, incline that's going on right here. So I'm not going to straighten it from here to there, but I'll show you just so you guys could get an idea of what it looks like. I'm going to click, say for example, from here to here. Once I let go, there, it already did it. It was so fast. I'm going to do it again. This time I'm going to select something that's completely off. I'm going to go from here to here. Notice how it went ahead and completely rotated my image. So I just pressed escape. I'm going to go ahead and straighten it again. I'm going to go ahead and click, uh, let's see, maybe from over here from this far, this horizon point to this area here. You can see that it's just a very minor rotation. So if you don't think your image needs it, you don't have to apply it. But since we are using the crop tool, it already has this tool. Um, it, it already has it set up uh, for cropping. This allows you now to work with the co composition of your image. Once you create your panorama, don't feel that you need to keep all of the information that's present here. For example, on the far left-hand side, there's some information here that just isn't uh, necessary. Maybe also at the extreme uh, front and center right here, maybe I want to get rid of this. So for this tool, there's already an overlay here. There's different types of overlays. So right here, I have rules of thirds, and it is set to all we show overlay. You could cycle through different types of overlays. I'm going to keep the rules of thirds. And I'm going to go ahead and maybe, first I'm going to bring this in just a bit. I want to keep a little bit of this green, but not so much over here, because I don't need that much. Now let's see if I go ahead and bring this up just a bit, just to see how it works. Maybe just a bit. Okay, we see a little bit of grass, which is fine. Now up on top, I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to crop this down so much because I do want to keep the top of the building over there on the far left. So I'll probably leave it here. Now, in order to execute this operation, you can either press return to apply it or escape to cancel it. But before you do that, there's an important option. Up here, there is delete crop pixels. With this turned on, 
it'll basically cut off everything that's outside of this overlay will be deleted. If I leave it unchecked, what it's going to do, it's basically going to resize my view within this canvas. So it'll make everything viewable within this one square. The choice is up to you. I'm going to go ahead and leave it uncropped because if I wish to go back to it later, it'll still be there. I'm going to go ahead and press return. So give this a moment to apply your crop. And here you go. Let's go ahead and zoom in. So now you can see what we have here with very minor edits. We, we could always go in and further make additional enhancements such as color, tonal uh, adjustments. Um, but we're not going to go over those in this tutorial. I wanted to show you how you could go ahead and make the panorama, how to straighten it, and how to crop it. Only two things left. I want to show you how to save and how to resize. Uh, let's go ahead and save it first, because I'm going to save it twice. I'm going to res I'm going to save it in this full size quality, and then also after I resize it as a smaller version. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to select Save. Since I have not saved this, Save and Save As do the same thing. I'm going to select Save, and it wants a name. I'm going to go ahead and give this one as, I'll just call this Pano Demo 01. Format, I do want to keep the Photoshop format. I'm going to go ahead and tell it Save. Now Photoshop is saving your file. Great, it's been saved. So the next thing that I want to do, I want to resize this image. To do so, I'm going to go to Image. I'm going to select, uh, sorry, I can't see. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and select Image, Image Size here. Now by default, what you might have, uh, you might have uh, something like this. And within this window, it gives you two different dimensions. First, right here up on top, the pixel dimension is the data structure or the resolution of your image. You can see that the height is 1,756 pixels tall. The width is 9,010 pixels. Document size at a resolu resolution of 300, I could print out a 30 by just shy of 6 inches in height. So it's a, a decent size panorama. Uh, this only allows me to change the document size. I don't want to change that. I actually want to resize this to make a smaller version of my panorama. To do this, you have to turn on resample image. Make sure that the constrained proportions are turned on. And for this example, I'm going to change the lesser of these two numbers, this being height, down to 1,000. I'm going to go ahead and select OK, and now it's going to resize my image. It's going to make it smaller. And since it's smaller, it's going to be a smaller file size. But also, since I've resized it to be smaller, um, instead of overwriting my previous save, I'm going to go ahead and save it again. I'm going to select File, Save As. And this time, I'm going to rename it as Pano Demo 01, maybe with another name as Small because this is the smaller version, and select Save. Now the reason that I have this smaller version is that uh, for my class, uh, I'm having them turn in a version of their panoramas. In order to save space, I only need the smaller one. I still have, I'm going to have my students keep their higher resolution images, uh, but to turn in uh, for this step, I want the smaller versions. And there you have it. In here, we were able to uh, assemble our panorama in Photoshop. We were also able to straighten, crop, save, and resize our files. Great. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Uh, otherwise, now that you know how to do this, go shoot some photos, throw them into Photoshop, check them out. Repeat the process until you get the images that you want. All right. Enjoy!